Hey you guys, welcome aboard Crab Central Station. My name is Darcy and in this video, we're gonna talk about a couple different ways to build advanced pools for your hermit crab tank. Let's get started. All right, so before we can really get into the nitty and gritty of this video, I just wanna make sure that you have already checked out our easy hermit crab pools in this video right up here, because that video, you guys, covers the basics of what you need for your hermit crabs to survive and thrive. And we're not gonna go into the basics in this video. This is really like, I guess, part two of hermit crab pools, really advancing the type of pools that you can have and how to maintain them and that sort of thing. So make sure that you first watch that video so that your hermit crabs have their basic needs met before you try really doing something maybe a little bit more advanced. So let's get started on these ideas. If you haven't already, make sure that you subscribe to our channel and follow us on all our social medias where we give you pictures and videos, lives, updates, like really cool stuff coming to the channel. We are releasing official Crab Central Station merch. <laughs> Guys, isn't Sweet Tea the cutest? This is a little um, crop top hoodie. We also have t-shirts and bags, backpacks, phone cases, laptop covers, stickers, like tons of stuff. We're so excited. All the CCS um, crew are on these. We've got mugs as well. You have all of the different characters if you just want one particular, your favorite maybe. So check out all our new merch um, on the second big project that we're revealing, our brand new website. So if you go to www.crabcentralstation.com, that's where you will see our merch shop as well as lots of other really cool things that we don't get to share with you guys on our YouTube channel, such as our breeding blog, which has never before seen footage of our breeding attempts, as well as pictures and just the whole blog of what we did every day, um, all the emotions tied in and all of that, um, as well as links to our favorite shops and all the products that we use in, in our tanks and for our hermit crabs. Um, also, we have a link to great um, just text and um, care guides that you guys can read about from Crab Street Journal and Lycos. That's right there on the site as well. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, our channel also, you can link it right there from our website. So it's just a one-stop place now for everything Crab Central Station. It's www crabcentralstation.com and you can find everything you want right there in that one place. Okay, so the first thing that we need to consider when thinking about advanced pools in our tank is the actual size of the container. So you can see behind me, I have a 10 gallon freshwater tank in our build here, and that is a really big pool to have in a hermit crab tank. However, we have about 500 gallons in molting space, plus all the toppers, which equals about 700 total gallons here, that this pool is helping to raise the humidity. And so that's not too big for this size build. If you have a smaller tank, you need a smaller container. So remember, we're trying to have between 75 and 85% humidity um, consistently. So if your pool is too small, you're gonna struggle with low humidity consistently. If your pool is too big for your tank, you will struggle with too high of humidity consistently. And guys, too high of humidity can lead to quite a few problems actually. It's not healthy for your hermit crab to be living in a prolonged high humidity environment. Also, it leads to condensation, which drips down the walls of your tank and then potentially can lead to a flood when it saturates your substrate. Also, it leads to bacterial blooms and mold problems within your tank. Um, you know, like I said, a spike in humidity is one thing, guys, but prolonged high humidity because you have too big of a pool in your size tank, that's a problem that we don't want to have happen. So let's keep that in mind when you choose the container to have your advanced pool in. I have some examples here in front, and of course there's lots more out there. These are just a few, you guys. But um, we have used critter keepers in several of our tanks, 75 gallons as well as 90 gallons. Um, I tried them in a 40 gallon and they were too big. 
So I can tell you this is already getting too big for a 40 gallon breeder. Um, might want to go with something a little bit smaller like this size in a 40. Um, this might be a little bit too much even in a 20. You might want to have to go with a little bit shallow, um, shallower of a pool. Also keep in mind that whatever size you're getting, of course you want your largest hermit crab to be able to fully submerge. That's after you add all the decor and everything, your filters and bubblers and all of that. Okay, so once your, your pools are full in, in the tank, you want your largest crab to be able to fully submerge. All right, so this one right here is a corner tank. It's actually a beta tank that we got at Walmart for like $13.99 and it actually comes with a filter. So I wish I would have found these earlier along in my journey fits nicely in the corner, is really deep. Um, and then again, Tupperware, and you can even use smaller Tupperware. Um, remember to double it up so that you have easy access for maintenance. Also, you can keep an eye on any kind of leaks or cracks that might potentially lead to a flood in your tank. Um, if you're confused about the doubling up and that sort of thing, check out that video, Easy Hermit Crab Pools, because we go into depth about that and show you guys exactly how to do that. All right, so think about your space in your tank and what size pool is gonna be best for your tank before you guys get started. All right, so one way that you can really bump up your pools into the more advanced category is by adding something called a bubbler. And this is super simple to put in your tank and it's really pretty inexpensive. We're gonna tell you guys why it's a good option and exactly how to do this and all the products that you need to purchase to make it happen. So something to keep in mind is that you want to use a bubbler to move your water. So normally it's just stagnant in your tank and you're having to replace it every two days. By adding a bubbler, you can replace your water and change it out weekly, which is much easier on maintenance on yourself. And that is because the stone, the air in the stone is moving the water and keeping it fresher longer. Now you would still want to add your prime every two days like you're used to doing, again, because the bubbler is not cleaning the water, it's just moving it. So you do wanna make sure if you're adding bubblers that you still have easy access to your pool to be able to completely remove it from your tank because you are gonna have to empty the entire pool, kind of clean out everything in there to replace your fresh and salt water on a weekly basis, even with your bubblers. All right, so now that we know why we wanna use the bubbler, let's get into how do we actually put this in our pool. So the things that you are going to need are airline tubing, an air stone, and a pump. And then I highly suggest that you also look into getting something called a regulator. All right, so let's talk about how to actually put your bubbler together and get it in your pools. So what I have right here in front of you guys is already something that we would have done in our basic easy hermit crab pool video. It's a small container. We have something on the bottom like rocks or shells or sand, something to help those hermit crabs grip at the bottom of your pool. These are just some river rocks and also a way out of the pool. And in the tank, I would have a way into the pool. Just a note here, guys, you do not want to use real wood as a way in or out of your pool because wood actually soaks up the water and then it actually leaches it into your substrate, which can lead to a flood. So real wood is not the best idea for using as a way in and out of the pool, um, transferring your water out of your pool into your sub. We definitely don't want that. So that's what we have here. Um, also, you will need your regulator, your air stone, an aquarium pump, and airline tubing. So what you will do is take your airline tubing and go ahead and put your air stone on the bottom. Just slips right in there, easy peasy. Okay, now you're gonna actually place your air stone in the pool. I would suggest putting it underneath something heavy so that the, it doesn't end up getting pushed out of the pool. Maybe even pushing it under a rock a little bit so that it doesn't come up and start spraying everywhere. All right, so the rest of this tube, you need to cut it to the correct length. It needs to go all the way to the back of your tank and out of the tank um, to wherever you're gonna house your pump. So we keep our pumps underneath our tanks and so our airline tubing needs to go all the way to the, out of the top behind the tank and to the pump. So um, that's why I'm having you go ahead and put the stone in your pool inside of your tank, wherever it's gonna be, so that you can measure 
the length of air tubing that you're gonna need for your particular pool in your tank. All right, so now we're gonna actually attach this end of our bubbler to the regulator. And it's going to go on the top, on the top of your regulator right here. Go ahead and push it in there really good. Nice and snug. Okay, and this is your knob that helps you to regulate the amount of air. This is actually going to be somewhere outside of your tank, maybe at the top of it or near your air pump. Okay, then you're going to have a second piece of airline tubing that you're going to connect to this outside part of your regulator. And then this end is what you're going to attach to the pump. So you're just gonna slide this right in, in here. <laughs> My hands are wet from the rocks in the water. Okay, there we go. All right, so push this in here. And this is pretty much your setup. All right, we've got one airline tubing going to your pump, your regulator, the second airline tubing coming out of the top of your regulator and going into the water where your air stone is. Okay, and then this would be located somewhere in the back of your tank somewhere back here okay and then you're just going to plug in your pump you can see here that there's no bubbles and that's because I have the regulator turned all the way off so all you have to do is turn this knob a little bit and you will have your bubbles now this is full blast which could mean that it's too much water um, aeration and your humidity goes really high maybe there's a lot of splashing going on which is getting your substrate too wet so that's where this comes in handy and you can just turn it down a little bit. All right, you guys, so I hope that this was helpful and I can promise you that your hermit crabs are gonna love the bubblers that you are adding to your tank because our, I don't know if it's like spa day or something, but our hermit crabs always enjoy the pools when we add the air stones to them. Also, it's gonna be easier maintenance on you, so I really hope that you enjoy that. Keep in mind, you guys, with that regulator to always watch your tank for extra splashing um, and too high of a humidity because you don't wanna have that for a prolonged amount of time. So the next way that you can really bump up your pools for your hermit crabs is by adding a filter. And the great thing about filtered pools, I think really two things. Okay, so for one, you have way easy maintenance. So since our hermit crabs don't live in the water, like say a fish would, um, you really don't have to change the water all that often once you add a filter, which is super great when you have as many tanks as, the, as we do. Um, also, the second reason I love filtered pools is that you can have bigger pools. Again, you have to have the right size tank to support it, so keep that in mind. But bigger pools that aren't going to be removed. You know, this is a 10 gallon pool. We're not gonna, we can't remove this to clean it. And so we get to do a lot more with it and the skate, landscaping inside of it or aquascaping, I guess you would say. Um, and the crabs love these big pools and several crabs can be in there at a time and that sort of thing. So we just really enjoy the idea of having a permanent pool in the tank and the ease of the maintenance of having a filter. So we are gonna put some links, you guys, in the description below so that you can kind of go down and read about how to um, cycle your water and the importance of keeping your water clean. And so the whole cycle of how filters work in, in the water cycle in a filtered pool is really important just to kind of have that knowledge if you're gonna go this route. So we are gonna show you guys how to set up a filtered pool in your tank. And also we're gonna show you guys how we clean them. For filtered pools, you're going to have obviously a little bit bigger container. This is gonna be stationary within your hermit crab tank. You need, again, something on the bottom for traction. We have some river rock here. Um, you will also need your actual filter. Guys, there are so many kinds of filters out there. You just need to do research and find the one that's gonna work for you. This is a one gallon pool, and so the filter that I am using is built for one to four gallons. It's a small filter. If I were going to do two and a half gallon pools, I would get a bigger filter. I would do the five to 10 gallons. Um, I just feel like if you go, go for a filter that filtrates more water, it generally does a better job. It keeps your water cleaner longer. So again, just adding to that helpful maintenance piece. All right, so 
you, once you get your filter out of the box, it comes with filter media um, that you slip in there and um, you're just gonna find the spot within your tank that fits best for your filter. Something that you really, really, really have to keep in mind here, you guys, is hermit crabs are stronger than you think and they're very active at night, even if you don't necessarily see it. And a lot of times we have seen hermit crabs actually tip a filter over and so this filter would then take all this water up out of here and spill it over into the substrate causing a flood so number one thing that i make sure when i'm filtering pools is that my filter is inside my tank it's not the water spout is not over the top of the tank itself it's underneath it and then i make sure that i anchor it really really well so I've got these river rocks here. I'm gonna scoot them over. And then I'm gonna add something to help them get in and out. Over here maybe. There we go. All right, and I would probably maybe Add a few more river rocks if you can. All right, then you're gonna go ahead and add your prime treated water. Of course, you're gonna have one with fresh water and one with salt water. Your filter is gonna have a fill line on it. So you need to double check and see where the minimum fill line is. If you are not able to meet the minimum fill line, then that filter is not a good option for that size pool that you have. All right, so you can see here that I've got the cord coming out of my pool and I'm gonna have to feed that through the back of my tank. Again, you're gonna have to go out of the glass and cut yourself a notch in plastic or like we do, it just comes out of the top of the glass at our tank and we tape over where the cord is coming out so that um, we keep the humidity in and we keep the crabs from uh, getting out of the glass. All right, so I just plugged in our filter it takes just a few minutes to get started here and you can see that it is already sucking up the water and spilling out the top. So what's happening here is the filter media inside of your filter is what's actually catching all the bad stuff in your water and then it is changing it into the good stuff. Um, again, read the links below if that's all very confusing to you, um, but that is how it's actually cleaning this pool water. Um, allowing you to do less maintenance um, and go a longer period of time. At this point, you could also add a bubbler if you wanted. We put bubblers in all of our pools and um, the crabs seem to really love it. All right, so we're going to talk about maintenance of filtered pools because you don't remove them from your tank. They are stationary within the tank. And so we have to do partial change water changes and so how are you going to do that when you can't remove your pool you're going to use something called a siphon and you're going to need some type of wastewater bucket we just have a home depot bucket right here they do make siphons in different sizes we have a large one because we have a 10 gallon pool but you can get a smaller one and um, if your pool is smaller so what you're going to do is put this portion inside the pool as deep as you can. And then this part is in the wastewater bucket. Now you do have to have gravity. So your bucket does have to be lower than the pool itself. So we have ours just sitting here on a stool. Then you're gonna pump this right here until you can get the water from the pool to come down into your bucket. And with the help of gravity, that happens pretty quickly. All right, so you can see the water is now emptying from this pool. And so this acts like a vacuum. I don't know if you can see it, but it's already cleaning up some of the kind of stuff here in the bottom of our pool. So you're just gonna go around the bottom of your tank and try to get suction up some of the yucky stuff that you can see. Now, if your pool is about one gallon, you're gonna try and get as much water out of your pool as you can during your water change. Since this is a very large pool, we just do a partial change. Oh, 
probably anything at about two gallons, you could go ahead and do a partial change. I hope this was helpful to you guys. I hope that you got some great ideas on how you can make your hermit crab pools even better and advance your hobby as hermit crab keepers. Again, we're on this journey and maybe this is the next step for you. If this seems overwhelming and too much, it's not necessary. You can stay with easy hermit crab pools and your hermit crabs will get exactly what they need to survive and thrive, you guys. This is really just like the next step in the hobby if you're wanting something more advanced. Here are some ideas for you that might be a good fit. Please, if you have any questions, of course, you can always DM us. And guys, if you haven't already, make sure that you subscribe to our channel and follow us on all our social medias where we give you pictures and videos, lives, updates, like really cool stuff coming to the channel. And you don't want to miss any of that cool stuff. Um, and guys, hey, thanks for joining us. Can't wait to see you in the next video. Bye.